Hi guys, Chloe Lin here, and we are going to be discussing how to get your Vroid model into Unreal Engine, kind of like this right here. As you can see, everything moves perfectly, the hair is nice and flowy. And it's honestly a really simple process, it just takes a couple nodes in Unreal Engine, uh, a bit of re-rigging re the ant. <laughs> and then maybe about 10 to 15 minutes depending on your level of expertise with Unreal Engine uh, but I'm gonna do my best to show you how to do it in Unreal Engine 5.3 there are some tutorials out there on how to do it in 5.0 and 5.1 but those tutorials don't they can be adapted for 5.3 but it does take quite a bit of know-how um, with Unreal Engine on how to actually get it implemented. It's a pain in the butt. It took me forever to figure it out, so I figured I'd make this tutorial on how to do it, so that way you don't have to go through that struggle. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually go to the link down below. Uh, it's going to be a GitHub link. This is going to be for the VRM4U uh, 5.3 plugin for Unreal Engine. Uh, the 5.3 plugin is going to be right here. You can tell because it says VRM for you, 5.3. It's pretty self-explanatory. The newer versions are going to be on the bottom. The older versions are going to be on the top. So if you come in here for 5.4, whenever it gets released, it'll be on the bottom. Then once you get that downloaded, you're going to go into... You're going to drop it into whatever folder you use as like a throwaway folder. Uh, if you use one, you're going to unzip the folder then open it up. Go into the plugins, and then right here you'll have the VR, VRM for you a plugin right there. If you click into that, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't really make any sense to you, which is perfectly fine. Then you're going to open up a new file explorer, just so you can easily drag and drop into uh, your Unreal Engine file. You're going to go to whatever hard drive you have Unreal Engine saved to. Go to Unreal Engine. Go to UE 5.3. Click engines, double click engines, double click plugins, and then drag and drop that into here. And as you can see, I already have it installed in 5.0 or 5.3. Then you can go ahead and close both of these folders. If you have Unreal Engine already open, go ahead and close it and reopen it. You're going to have to do this a couple of times. Trust the process. It's a pain in the butt. Go ahead and open and close or close it and then open it again. That basically just initializes the plugin into Unreal Engine. It doesn't implement it into the project that you're working on, which is why you're going to have to restart it again, uh, like you do for any other plugin with Unreal. So once you get restarted and everything like that, go up here to Edit, Plugins, then search VRM, and it should be the first option there. It will say for UE4. It is for UE5. Don't worry. I freaked out about it first whenever I first ran into this issue. I don't know if it's going to be fixed uh, with later iterations, but we're going to work with what we have. Go ahead and click on that. It'll prompt you down here at the bottom to restart your uh, Unreal Engine, your current running project. Go ahead and click restart. And then once you get back, pause the video here and then jump back once your uh, application gets restarted. And as you can see, I already, or as I showed earlier, I already have it installed and working perfectly uh, in Unreal Engine. So if you go to the Characters tab, you can basically put this anywhere. It doesn't have to be the Characters tab. You're going to want to make a folder named Vroid, or it can be named whatever you want to. I just go with Vroid. This is where my current one is. We're going to redo this for you guys. So I have one here named Vroid2. And then we can go ahead and drag and drop our... Go ahead and make this a bit bigger our VRM file into Unreal Engine. I'm going to use a different one, actually. Awesome, this is actually one that we created in the last video. This is gonna be the .vrm. Go ahead and drop that in there. You can go ahead and close whatever folder it's in. And then there's a couple things you're going to want to do. This advanced tab is going to be completely closed when you first open it up. Go ahead and open that up. 
scroll down here until you see generate IK bones. Go ahead and give that a click. And then go ahead and turn the material type to subsurface profile. And then for the skeleton, we are going to use the SK underscore mannequin skeleton, I do believe. Hold on, let me check my notes just to be sure. Okay, so we do not need to set up the skeleton yet. That's what the re-rigging will be used for uh, later on. And then if you watch a couple tutorials, I'll go ahead and pull up this one here. Um, made by I Shrek Joe Mama. <laughs> Uh, this is actually the one that I got started on uh, when I was first doing this project. Um, this is actually for Unreal Engine 5.0, which is completely fine. You can do this in Unreal Engine 5.0, but with his... Where is it? There are a couple options in that window that you do not need. So if you run across this video, you don't need to do everything that is in his video. I can find it. You right here. So around the four and a half minute mark, there's going to be a couple things that you do not need uh, for your implementation if you're doing it in 5.3 or later. So once you get it to this point, you can go ahead and click import. It'll take it just a second and it'll auto-populate that folder with everything that we need. Awesome, so we are good to get started. Let's go ahead and click the Characters uh, folder again. Go to Mannequins. Go to Rigs. Then go to RTG Mannequin. And as you can see, I already have this one imported into the RTG Mannequin re-rigging process. But what you're going to want to do is change this to change the target the uh, yellow one here to your basically the one that you want it to be if you have multiple you're gonna have to do this each time so you're gonna get used to having to constantly change this so go ahead and click on which one do we want to go with we're gonna go with the mannequin you always want to go with the one that uh, is the mannequin it's gonna be the most accurate so whenever you first bring in your character model, it is going to be in a T-pose. So how you would normally get it out of the T-pose, or get it matched up with the mannequin model, you'll want to basically do some creative engineering. You're going to go to source, which the source is going to be the model. You will set the source to T-pose. And then that will match them both up. Uh, they'll both be in a T-pose, which is what you want. You want them both to be as matching as possible. And then just to test it out, you would come down here and just type in idle. And double click idle. And they should both match up from there. It's a pretty simple process. I do apologize that I couldn't show you the actual beginning process uh, in this file. But whenever you go to change uh, the rig, from one character to another, you shouldn't have to retarget it as like you would from the first <laughs> first time that you loaded it. That should be a lot simpler from the first time on. Yeah, just try to get the source to T-pose, and then you should be good to go from there. And then if you want to adjust it further, set this to zero, the target mesh offset, the first digit there. Set it to zero, get them as close together as possible. So that way they match up, and you can just go ahead and change that back. And once you're done, go ahead and click save. Come down here. You're going to want to make a brand new animation blueprint for your new character. So come down here into your Vroid uh, folder. Right click, go to animations, animation blueprint. You're going to do SK mannequin or... Um, Skill underscore OUGFB. So the reason that you click generate IK bones in the initial setup process is because it generates its own skeleton. Let's go ahead and click create. We're going to give this a name, Vroid, and it's going to save before I can finish typing. Disable autosaves if you don't have that already disabled. The problem. 
hero two underscore animation blueprint. There we go. Double click into that guy. And just because I like to stay organized, we're going to go right here. Then we are ready for the next step. So since I already have this pretty much made, I'm going to come in here and basically copy and paste all of this over. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get the retarget pose from mesh. I'll show you the more difficult way to do this. Come in here, retarget. Pose for mesh, not bones, Jesus. And then the next thing you're going to want to grab is this VRM spring bone. VRM spring bone. And you're just going to connect these up. That gives you your local component and your component to local. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is click on retarget pose from mesh. The can't even talk today. And you should be clicking the RTG, OU, GFB, whatever the title is for your um, Vroid model. Go ahead and click that. I'm pretty sure that's what we click, right? Nope, we want to retarget it from the mannequin. So RTG mannequin is what you want to click. This one right here. And then VRM springbone. It should be VM underscore the title of your dot VRM file underscore VRM meta. Go ahead and click that. Give it a compile and it should be working perfectly. And then the next thing that we are going to want to do is come down here into blueprints. Go to your third person. Go to viewport. Click on the mesh. You're going to want to set it to uh, the animation blueprint that you have created. So mine was Vroid2 underscore A, B, E underscore P underscore C. Bleh. Then you're going to set it to your new skeleton. It should be SK underscore whatever the title is for your .vrm file. Go ahead and give that a click. Compile. And it should be good to go. That is our Vroid model that we made in our last video. And it should be working perfectly now. So if we go ahead and click play. We are now our new character. And that is it. That is pretty much everything that you need to do. I am stuck in a hole now. But it's a pretty simple and straightforward process. Uh, you doing it in UE 5.3 is a little bit simpler. There's not as much to it as there was in 5.0 or 4.2. So hopefully this video helped you guys out quite a bit. And if you have any more questions about it, definitely leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. But other than that, that is it. Have a good one and definitely check out my past videos. They're pretty cool. Um, I'm going to try and post more content on here. I'm trying to hit at least once a week uh, for an upload. I did miss last week, but this is going to try and hopefully cover the last week. So there you go. Have a good one.